and welcome to the Varsity Tutor Star Course Series, where today we are so thrilled to have the opportunity to catapult into another exciting class with our friends at the Liberty Science Center. I'm joined today by Rosa and Alejandro of the Liberty Science Center in New Jersey, who are here to tell us more about how simple machines work and how they can make our work easier. We're even gonna get the chance to learn how we can make our own simple machine with very ancient origins, catapult, using everyday items we find at home. Now, before I hand over the controls to Rosa and Alejandro, I wanna make sure everyone is ready to collaborate and to learn together. So as we move through the lesson, if you have any questions for Rosa or Alejandro, and as they'll have some questions for you, feel free to use the chat panel on the right-hand side of your live learning platform to answer and ask questions throughout the lesson. And if we don't get to your questions right, right away, not to worry, we're gonna have about 10 minutes at the very end of today's lesson set aside for Q&A. You'll also wanna make sure that you have your cameras close by because toward the end of the lesson, you'll also have the opportunity to lean into the screen and pose for a selfie. And if you've been building along with us, I encourage you to include the results of your project in that selfie. If you tag us on Instagram here at Varsity Tutors, as well as the Liberty Science Center, you'll be entered to win four Liberty Science Center tickets, as well as an enrollment to a Varsity Tutors coding camp uh, enrollment. So we'll talk a little bit more about those details toward the very end of today's lesson. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and hand things off to your instructor for today, the Director of STEM and Innovation at the Liberty Science Center, Rosa. Hi, everyone. So wonderful to meet you all today through this platform. And with me, as you already heard from Haley, that I have a colleague of mine at Liberty Science Center. What we're going to do today is we are going to dive into, or rather I should say fly into the world of catapults. So catapults are very, very fascinating, but in order to build a catapult or even design a catapult, we really need to understand the components that make up a catapult. So just to let you know, Liberty Science Center is located in Jersey City, New Jersey. And today you are becoming our engineer. So not just any engineer, but mechanical engineers. And you'll be using simple machines, which can be found everywhere. Everywhere you turn, you will be able to find a simple machine. And in fact, I'm pretty sure that you can name all six simple machines. Go ahead and take an opportunity and enter your statements or your answers for identifying any of the simple six simple machines that you may know of. Go ahead and take a moment. Excellent, excellent. We're getting some great, wow, we're getting some amazing responses coming through. That's pretty awesome. Excellent, so I'm seeing the word levers, I'm seeing the word, or lever, depending on how you pronounce it, pulley, ooh, excellent. I'm, I'm even seeing some examples of these items as we would find them in everyday situations. That's actually gonna be the next question. But right now I'm seeing pulleys, I'm seeing, ooh, an inclined plane, excellent. Wedge, excellent, wheel and axle, Really awesome. Excellent job sending me those answers. Now, as you know, I was going to ask you to name some of these simple machines that you would see in everyday places like the playground or maybe your school or maybe in your home. Can you tell me of some common things that you would find that are simple machines? And just in case you might be wondering, just remember that simple machines are usually made up of materials that either have very little or no moving parts. Excellent, excellent. I'm seeing a slide. Yeah, a slide is actually a great example of an inclined plane. Beautifully said. Anyone? Oh, good. Scissors. We have two wedges or two wedges put together. We could even say that there are two uh, levers put together. Excellent answers, excellent answers. We have some wonderful scientists with us today. I'm really excited to see that. And scientists who know their stuff. Perfect. So now that you're giving me these great answers, 
Um, another thing that we know about simple machines is that when you combine them, you can actually make something called a compound machine. So a compound machine is made up of simple machines and usually two or more. So now that we've had a chance to say some of the simple machines that we find in everyday life, can you think of some compound machines that are very complex and are made up of multiple simple machines? Ooh, a bicycle. We're getting scissors again. That's, I will accept that absolutely. Fishing rod. Yeah, the fishing rod and reel. Awesome. Oh, excellent. Excellent. And even a car. Yeah, a car is a very complex machine. Wonderful. So great job, young scientists. We're getting some great answers coming through. Um, now, there, the next thing that we need to do is when we're going to design something like a catapult. Yes, a catapult is made up of many parts. Um, it includes a few simple machines. And in order to build a catapult, we actually have to go through a process. And that process is called the engineering and design process. So that process looks like this. You may have been, you may be familiar with the engineering and design process. If you are, share that in the in the chat as well. Excellent. So we have a lot of friends who, a lot of scientists who have shared that they they have actually seen this process before or are familiar with this process, and some who are not. And that's perfectly fine. So what we have here is the entire process. And in fact, there's a loop or a cycle in the process. The engineering and design process is a creative method um, that allows other people who are inventing and designing to try to meet human needs or wants in order to solve a problem. Often, there are several design solutions that exist, but there could be one that may be better than others. And while you're thinking of features to include in your design, you also have to think about the constraints or the limiting factors. For example, do you have those materials handy? Is it gonna cost you a lot of money? Will this material uh, do what you think it's going to do? So based on those constraints, your design will change and maybe your ideas will also change. And so this process is to help you go through those inventing steps. And it always starts with asking questions because as scientists, even young or old, we are curious. And so we like to ask questions to help us better identify what the problem is. What is really at the heart of this problem? Then when you ask that question, and you might actually end up with a lot of questions, you need to think about which one of these questions can you tackle best and what kind of imagination, this is the, the thinking and the designing where you're thinking about that question and how best to answer it and how to approach it. When you, got, when you have something that you've imagined, then you go and you plan it, create it, test it, is extremely important and improve it because there's always going to be some modifications that you'll need to do. And this is why this in particular is surrounded by arrows because it can go on as long as you need. But finally, when you are ready and you have a working and successful example, you share it with your friends, your families or other scientists. Now, I do have my friend over there at Liberty Science Center, Mr. Alejandro. Hey, Mr. Alejandro, uh, what are you doing over there at Liberty? Ah, good question, Ms. Rosa. So before I actually reveal what I've actually been pulling into the studio, it's been taking quite a while to pull it in, but I managed to squeeze it into the studio. Uh, let's talk a little bit about simple machines in history. So. Obviously, our big project for today is we're going to be working on a catapult, all right? So interestingly enough, 
The word catapult is actually describing various machine types. So simply put, a catapult is just a device or a machine that is designed to hurl or project an object for great distances. So there are three big machines that fall under the catapult category. All right, so some of you may be familiar with some of these. Uh, the first one is the one up top called a ballista. So essentially a ballista is a giant crossbow. So it hurls giant arrows for great distances. Now, when you think of catapult, you are most familiar with this design right here, especially since we call it a, cat a catapult uh, in common language, but technically it's called a mangonel. All right, so we're pretty familiar with these types of machines. And I'll actually talk a little bit more in a couple of seconds about this particular design. But finally, we have our trebuchet. So the trebuchet is another type of catapult and it's designed to hurl objects over uh, objects that have very tall heights to them, very high altitudes. So namely, trebuchets have been used to hurl objects over giant castle walls, all right? So Ms. Rosen and I had some colleagues. We kind of came up with an idea of building a catapult of our own. So Ms. Rosa will actually introduce you to a software called Tinkercad in which you'll be working on. But just to give you an idea, what you see here is in fact, a version of that Tinkercad. We actually have some nice uh, uh, 3D printers and we were able to design all of this on Tinkercad and kind of piece it all together. So here we go. This is our mangonel design. But, you know, it's a little bit hard. As you can see, it's a little bit hard for me to show you on the document cam. I'm trying to like fit it all in. It looks pretty cool and everything, but I think I can do better. All right, so. Let me introduce to you our project that we have done in the past few years, and that is our mangonel. All right, so there it is. So this is live size. You can see I'm standing right next to it. Hi, everyone again. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's pretty similar in design that we saw in that photo. So we have a base, as you can see, and I'll be very happy to show you our base. So there you have it. So this is the base. It's kind of like triangular, as you can see on the side. Uh, but for the most part, we have something called an abrupt stop. So you can see where the lever portion of our uh, mangonel is sitting on. So this is an abrupt stop. So mangonels are designed to launch or hurl objects directly across at an object. So when we're talking about medieval siege engines, all right, we're talking about mangonels aiming at castle walls. So instead of hurling over castle walls, these are designed to aim right at the castle wall. So we have our little scoop here that we kind of put like a soft uh, foam balls to just kind of launch across. All right, and you can see that the big signature about our catapults is that they rely on a lot of tension. So you can see here on our design, these are giant bungee cords. All right, so even as I were to pull it down, it's not going anywhere. It takes a lot of strength for me to actually pull it down. So all of this was done as a result of using the engineer design process that Ms. Rosa just showed us. So we started off with just a concept. We worked our way up from that concept to working it on designing on Tinkercad. We had the luxury of 3D printers to print out our design to see how well it did. As you can see, it's very different from our final product. So there were a lot of different steps that came when it comes to building the actual thing. And so started off with simple objects that you see that we got from our 3D printer, from our 3D design. And slowly but surely, as we we're making it a little bit more life-size, we had to make some adjustments to it in order to get a fully functional catapult. So before you get to this final stage, we'll actually start off in that concept phase that Ms. Rosa will be more than happy to show you. So go ahead, Ms. Rosa. 
Excellent. Thank you so much, Mr. Alejandro. And that was pretty awesome work. Uh, so what you want to do right now, my young scientists, my young mechanical engineers, is you want to be able to open up your Tinkercad. Now, hopefully you've had some time in um, learning and practicing using this software, but let me show you right now where my Tinkercad is. And that way we can actually work on something together. Now, knowing our constraints is important. And one of the constraints that we have is we're going to try to utilize some of the things that we find at home. So I have a lot of popsicle sticks and I have um, cardboard tubes. So I'm gonna look at those resources. So one of the first things that we're going to do is once you have your Tinkercad open, is you want to um, make sure that you are on the 3D design tab. So there are uh, multiple tabs in this session, uh, but we wanna make sure that the tab 3D design is highlighted. Now for your convenience, if you wanna be able to see what I'm doing as well as work on your design, you wanna make sure that you um, shrink the screen. So you may wanna shrink the zoom screen so that you can fit both your Tinkercad and your, the Zoom window uh, together. This way you'll be able to see what I'm doing and then, um, and then try it at, uh, in, immediately. So now that I see that my 3D design is highlighted in blue, I'm gonna go over and now these are the tiles. These are all the, the different um, 3D designs that I've made. You may have a few, you may have none. That's okay, we're going to work on this together. So the next thing I want you to do is right um, to the right of 3D design is something called create new design. I want you to click on that. What that does when you create new design is it'll open a new window with a work plane and um, a name, uh, just a, a made up name. So we want to work a little bit more logically. So we're going to click in this name area and we're just going to put here a cardboard tube or a toilet paper tube, because that's really what it is. And I'm going to uh, shorten it. Perfect. So my first design is going to be using a toilet paper tube or cardboard tube. Now, now that we have our space, um, I do wanna change some things. Uh, when you're building, you wanna make sure that either you learn to convert one unit of measurement, right? Inches, centimeters, millimeters to whatever you're actually going to do, or you change it to the actual unit that you're using. So we are gonna change our grid and those units in a moment, but let's do something first. Now that we've changed the name on our file, we're gonna go over to the right side where it says Tinkercad basic shapes. We want to open that selection. That's a drop down menu. That means that we're gonna have more things in there. When you click on it, you're actually going to see something called making at home. So these are items that you would normally find at home and someone designed them already and placed them these files in here for the user. So you wanna click on that. When you click on that, you'll see that a whole bunch of icons, images appear. And the one that we're gonna start off with is the cardboard tube. And so it's labeled as such. We want to click on the cardboard tube. When you click on the cardboard tube, it will appear, you can either click and drag depending on your device. You either click and drag on the cardboard tube and and place it onto the work plane. If you have multiple cardboard tubes, don't worry. You can always select the one that you do not want and you can go to the trash can and delete it. You know that it's selected because it has that blue halo around the object. So the nice thing about Tinkercad is that the objects that you find here are actually to scale. That means that a cardboard tube or a popsicle stick in this case, it's the same size as a real life popsicle stick. So what we wanna do is change our grid to show that. So this is where we're gonna to go to 
edit grid at the bottom of your screen. You see where it says edit grid. So you wanna click on that and it opens grid properties. I'll stay here for a moment and I can review some of those steps. So the first step you did was you named the project properly. Then you went to Tinker Making at Home, which is if you go to the little Tinkercad selection, you'll find a drop down menu that says Tink Make at Home. You'll find the cardboard tube. You'll click on the cardboard tube and you'll place it onto the work plane. Finally, we wanna change their units so that we can measure objects with the units of measurement that we may feel comfortable with. Some people feel comfortable um, using millimeters and centimeters. Others feel comfortable using inches. For today, we're going to convert things to inches. So how we wanna do this is this way. So you go down to grid property, uh, excuse me, uh, edit grid, a new window called grid property will open and you'll wanna click on units. And when you click on that, you'll see inches. So make sure you select inches. So now you see the width and the length. You want to click inside that box and we're gonna change the work plane so that it's a little bit larger. So you can click and delete and write the number 24. And this will be the same. So the length and the width will both be 24. And when you have that ready, you can go ahead and update your grid. What's that going to do is just think about it being 24 inches by 24 inches. So our work plane is going to be a nice square that we can work with. So this object that we finally see will appear a little differently because we've changed the units. So go ahead and upgrade. So now we have our cardboard tube looking a little bit more realistic in our world. So remember, you can always change your position um, by clicking on this box. And if you wanna go back to the original, you press home. Okay, so we have our first part, our cardboard. So now that we have the cardboard up, uh, what we're going to do, yep, so what we're going to do is we're going to stop right here. We're gonna take a pause and just make sure that everybody is with us. So for any students, and we may have a few, uh, who are just joining us, what we wanna do is the following. So for my friends who are with us and are at this point, I want you to uh, turn this tube around so that it's laying on its side, okay? And I know you're saying it's a cylinder, Rosa. It doesn't have sides. You know what I mean. Okay. So for the students who just joined us, what we want to do is this. We want to go to Tinkercad. So that link is, you can actually do it in the search bar, enter in the search bar to say uh, tinkercad.com. That's the link that you're going to use. And it's going to appear in this little uh, beautiful color arrangements, right? So I'm just going to go back to the beginning. So you have your Tinkercad open and what you want to do is have your zoom window kind of narrowed and your Tinkercad window right side by side next to each other. This way you can kind of see what I'm doing and then repeat it on, on the Tinkercad that you have. Okay, so now that you have Tinkercad up, the next part is to make sure that you're on the 3D design. So you're on the 3D design. And you know that because it's highlighted in blue. And then finally, what you want to do is you want to go over to the right of that and click on create new design. So this is the one that I was just working on with my friends. So you want to click on create new design. So now my mechanical engineers, once you have that open and it might take a, a, a few seconds for it to open. But the first thing we do when we're at, whenever we're working on a project is making sure that we name the project. So we're gonna name our project and it's going to be 
We're going to use a toilet paper or cardboard tube in order to make one of our catapults. So I'm going to shorten it up. TP catapult. And I'm just going to, it's probably going to get an error. So I'm just going to put a little dash for myself. There we go. So now that you've named it, now we're going to go over to, you can see my little yellow hand where it says Tinkercad basic shapes. And you want to click on that. That's a drop down menu. That drop down menu shows you all the features that Tinkercad has. We are going to go specifically to making at home. So when you see making at home, I want you to click on that and everything in this menu will change. These items are actually to scale, which means that if you were to put it on the screen um, and you were to measure it, it will actually be representing the length of the actual object in real life as you're holding it in your hand. So we wanna find the cardboard too, and we wanna click on it. So click and Sometimes you might have to click and hold other devices, have it set up differently. In either case, you click on it and you bring it over to your work plane, which is the blue um, on the screen. So my friends who have turned it to its side, we're gonna go towards you right now in a moment. So now we have our, our cardboard tube, but it really looks really gi giant in our screen. We just wanna change the, um, the units in which the, our, our platform is in right now. Um, we're gonna work with inches. So we're gonna change our grid to reflect that um, because most people in the US will feel more comfortable working with inches. Um, so in order to change it to inches, we wanna move down to the bottom right corner um, of your work plane and select on grid, uh, edit grid. When you click on edit grid, it's going to bring up a property box and the units automatically say millimeters. We're going to click on millimeters and we're going to change it to inches. Now we have a new situation. We have the width and length that are very small. So we're gonna make that a lot larger so that we can better uh, look at our, uh, our cardboard tube. So I'm gonna click in that white box underneath the word with, and I'm going to delete the number that is there and enter the number 24. And you can enter and enter or click out of it and it'll change. You wanna do this to the other side as well, to the link. So you want to, click in there, enter the number 24, and then click out of it or press enter. And so now our grid is going to be 24 in width and 24 in length. So click update and you'll see the difference. So here we are. So for my friends who were, uh, so my mechanical engineers who were uh, turning this or rotating this object, we are going to do that together. If you accomplish that, bravo. Uh, if you are with me, then here's how we're going to do it. When you click on the object, you can go and either zoom in close or go to this area to the left that says fit view to selected shapes. That means it's going to fit it actually quite nicely onto your screen. Look at that. If it's too close, back it up a little. Now, in order to rotate this from a, um, a vertical point, we're going to make it horizontal. So you see these now, you see these little curved double-headed arrows, and it kind of looks like a, the face of a clock. That's actually going to allow us to slowly rotate it. So I want you to take it, Hold it and you can move your hand or your mouse. And now you see these numbers, 53, 54, maybe you see bigger numbers, 70, 67 and so on. 
In either case, we want it to be 90 degrees, 90 degrees. That might take a little moment. So go ahead and try it out. I'll wait right here. So we just turned it. I'll do that again. I'll go back. I found the arrows. I clicked on the arrows. And now I see that clock face. That clock face allows me to rotate either individual numbers, like one digit by one digit, or by larger jumps, by larger numbers. In either case, I want it to go 90 degrees. So now, my cardboard tube is horizontal. One more time, select it. If you don't see the arrows, find the double-headed arrow and change it to 90 degrees. Okay, so now our, our tube is actually floating in the air. We can fix that. I want you to select the tube and you see this little black arrow. Maybe you saw it above, or depending on how you have it positioned, below. That black arrow allows you to squish it down or bring it down uh, from its floating area down to the work plane. So we can just move it down. Now, I'm not sure if you're seeing these numbers, but you should be seeing some um, units of measurement, one inch, an eighth, quarter, half, you can actually click in that box and enter zero. You can put in the digit, not two, but zero. And zero will make it flush with the floor, with the work plane. So now I know it's resting. Okay, so we have our cardboard tube laying on the floor. If you want to see that again, it's going to be floating. I can do this with the little black arrow. If I can't find the arrow, that means it's not selected. So select the tube, there's my arrow, and bring it down until it gets to zero. Here it is. You could do it from above as well. So let's say it's up here. It's selected. So I'm looking at that number over here. OK, awesome. So now the next step is to bring out the other pieces that are going to help us make our catapult. So if one of the parts is you draw out, you sketch out your catapult, then you can 3D design it, and then you can build it and modify it from that point on. I did sketch it and I looked around the house and I do have popsicle sticks, but I also have chopsticks. I, I could use straws too. In this case, let's just try using the chopsticks. So click on the chopsticks in your, in your make at home and bring them on the work plane. And while we're over here, why don't we get that little beverage cap? Why don't we get that beverage cap and click on it and bring it onto the work plane as well. So what I'm thinking here is, this is going to be the arm of my catapult. It's going to sit on my um, cardboard tube and my beverage cap is going to uh, be the little container that gets to hold the item that I get to hurl across the way. Okay, so in order to do this, let's do, Let's start with the bottle cap just to get it um, in the orientation that we want. So right now the bottle cap is not facing the right way. So we do need to flip it over. So we're gonna do, we're gonna use those arrows again to flip the bottle cap over. So find your arrows, find where your bottle cap is. And remember, if you select the bottle cap, you can use this fit view to selected shapes and it'll find it and put it really nice and centered on your screen. When you have it, find those little double-headed arrows again because we want to be able to 
rotate it so that the, the, the concave part of it is actually facing up. So here's my little double-headed arrow. I'm going to flip it around. So instead of going 90 degrees, right? Instead of going 90 degrees, I am going to go, can anyone guess? This is 90. What do you think? Oh, I saw someone type it in. Awesome. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to go 180 degrees. Nice job with the math. So it was originally upside down and now it's right side up. So guess what? We're done with this part. It's all good. Now we need to do something about the chopsticks because um, it's not quite in the position that we want it, um, but we're gonna, we're gonna get it there. We're gonna get it there. So let's place the bottle cap onto the chopstick. And for that, we need to lay the chopsticks down. So that's right, we're gonna rotate again. So I have my chopstick highlighted and I'm just gonna go to that fit view to selected shapes because that's going to center it on my screen much better. Oh, so much better, so much better. And hmm, I don't have all my arrows. I don't have all my arrows. There's one, there's another one. Hmm, let's see. I can completely rotate around, right? And I can use the cube to do that too. Rotate around. But now when I rotate around, I get to see more little double-headed arrows. I get to see more little double-headed arrows. And the one that I want is if your chopstick is placed somewhere similar to mine, then if you made your box up here, say right is facing you, then you'll see that arrow that I'm, that double-headed arrow that I need. That double-headed arrow is right here. And what we're gonna do is gonna lay it flat so that we can put the bottle cap on it. So just like we did with the Cardboard tube, the bottle cap, we're gonna do the same thing with the chopsticks. So here it is, I'm gonna rotate it. Oops, gotta grab it. Make sure I'm grabbing it. There it is. And rotate it. This time we don't want 180 degrees. We want 90 degrees again. Now it's hovering in the air, but you know what to do. We're going to get what is going to bring this chopstick back down to the work plane. What do you think? Hmm. Chopsticks are floating. We need to get it back down to the work plane. Did you think? Oh, yes. You, you figured it out. Nice job, that black little arrow. Yeah. So we're going to take that black little arrow. And we're going to slowly bring it down until this number over here is equal to zero. There it is. So we have our chopsticks lying flat. We have our bottle cap ready for us to be used. And finally, we're going to put these two things together. This is not the last step, but this is almost the last step. So now we want to place the bottle cap onto the chopstick. That means we're going to need to move the bottle cap up slightly and then over the chopstick and place it down. So I'm going to select the bottle cap. I want to make sure that I'm looking at this from the best view. So I'm going to change it to fit view to window. And that was too close. And I'm going to work with this end. So I'm gonna move this up a little. So now I'm going to, uh, we could do this actually two ways. I'll show you the one way now where you take that little black arrow exactly and you move it up slightly and then you are going to shift the bottle cap over the tooth, the, the chopsticks. And then you can turn your table and kind of look at it, make sure it's still hovering a little 
and I want it to touch. So I'm going to select that and make sure that it's touching. Perfect, just like that. Now, for those of you who want to do it a little fancier, you could do it a little fancier. I'll show you that. Just make sure that my friends who are working with me, all you want to do is place the bottle cap, move it over the chopstick, and then look at it so that you know that it is in the correct spot. Yeah, and that bottle cap and that chopstick are sitting really well together. Okay. So now the next thing I want you to do is I want you to, um, we're gonna group it. I'll show you the fancy way in a little bit, but we're gonna group it. Grouping it is very important because it's going to lock the two pieces together so they don't move when you want to move on the whole unit. So you wanna make sure, this is what we're gonna do. We wanna make sure that we only select the cap and the chopsticks. And we do that by clicking a little away from it. You see those little red ants? I call them red ants, but they're, they're something different. Uh, the selection lines, that's what they're called. You wanna basically select the bottle cap and the chopstick. You can, uh, you can click on one and click on the other if you hold shift. Uh, but if you don't have a keyboard, then using that selection line collects both of them. And now if we go up here, we see a little fat arrow and that arrow is really just two objects placed together so that it looks like an arrow. It's a square and a circle that are joined or grouped. So you wanna group it. So now it's gonna think, 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 think. It's actually going to group the two items. Now, when we move this, it's going to move as one solid unit. See that? One solid unit. Okay, now, we want to actually put this on top of the tube so that we get our little catapult. So let's do that. So just like you did with the bottle cap and the chopstick, you're going to take that little black arrow, you're going to put it on top of the, the tube and you have your first design for your catapult. Now they say, well, is it really gonna lay in that manner? No, 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 you can adjust it. You can move it over and you could even pivot it or rotate it slightly so that it looks more like it would in real life. So here we go. And we're gonna rest it on there. And there we have our final toilet paper catapult. If you wanted to, you can again use those two little lines so that it moves together and you're not moving them apart and group them. So that selection tool allows you to group them together. So now when you move it, they move as a solid unit. And in the end, you end up making something like this. So let me show you on my side. While you're working on grouping it, I'll show you on my side. So this is what I made after. So how did I lock them together in real life? A little bit of glue for the cap and two elastics for the connected to the tube. So I'll go back to that Tinkercad. That way you can Make sure, but that's your final product. Now you can use toilet paper tube or the cardboard tube, or you can use, if you have at home popsicle sticks, you can use popsicle sticks because this popsicle stick is going to be the same size as the popsicle sticks that you would buy from like a craft store or something. So you can build your own popsicle stick catapult. And that brings us to the end of our program.
All right, wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, so we are about ready for that selfie portion. And then if you, Rosa and Alejandro, if you have just a couple of extra moments to stay with us for one or two of the fantastic questions that students brought for us. Now, students, if you haven't had the chance to fully develop your project, either in Tinkercad or in real life, not to worry, we're going to have this recording up on YouTube, so you'll have the ability to go back, follow along, see where Rosa guided you to that website right in the very beginning of the Tinkercad portion of the lesson. Now, as a quick reminder, while we get ready for that selfie, if you lean into the screen, pose for a selfie, and post that selfie on Instagram, and you tag us here at Varsity Tutors, as well as Liberty Science Center, you'll be entered to win those four Liberty Science Center tickets, as well as a coding camp enrollment. Now, a little bit, bit of detail about that coding camp. Students will have the opportunity to learn all about the foundations of coding and development through the lens of game design. So campers will have the chance to work on collaborative activities with their fellow coders, complete after camp challenges, and even receive some specialized content from our camp celebrity guest stars. Now with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand things off to Alejandro, who is pose, posing with our very much in real life, uh, our category. So go ahead and take it over, Alejandro. All right. So just for our selfie, I tried my best to look for a projectile, but I actually just found a balloon. So I inflated a balloon so you can actually have a projectile in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend, well, not really, because it's pretty tough to pull it down, but I'm going to pretend like I'm going to pull the catapult and I'll be like mid-launch. So that way you'll take your selfie. So I guess I'll count down uh, starting at three. And so here we go. Let me pull it down a little bit. I'll do my best groaning face. So three, two, one, cheese. All right. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alejandro. So while we hang out here for just a couple more minutes of Q&A, uh, if you didn't get the chance to lean into the screen just yet, I'm, I'm sure we'll have plenty of opportunity with Alejandro front and center there with that catapult. In the meantime, we had a couple of students who maybe joined a little bit later on and weren't quite as up to speed with the Tinkercad site itself. So as a quick reminder to everybody, if you did not get the chance to follow along with Rosa and you were more so just observing today's lesson. That is absolutely fine. Feel free to take a look at that recording after class and you'll be able to walk through step by step with Rosa in your development of your catapult. And if you didn't get the chance to create in person just yet, definitely feel free to do so. And if you do, go ahead and include those creations in that, that selfie portion as well. Uh, so we had some students who were wondering a little bit about whether there were other machines, other simple machines or kind of a creation therein uh, that they can create on that same site. Oh, there is so much you could do on this site. Um, so not only can you make a TP uh, catapult, but you can actually make a big popsicle stick catapult. And let's see if it works. You could do probably better than I did right there. Um, but certainly you can create um, from catapults to even an ecosystem if you really desire to do so. Lots of people use it to create um, um, prosthetics. Um, or you can just create a new type of organism. So really, it's up to your imagination. Wow, that is so, so cool. And we saw a couple of different types of catapults today with a couple of different names. So students were wondering, what makes something a catapult versus a different type of simple machine? Excellent question. So yeah, so simply put, um, if it can project, uh, an object, if it can hurl an object at a great distance, um, it's considered a catapult. So in fact, the first type of catapult that has been recorded it was back during ancient Greek times, all right? So they're back in ancient Greece, uh, they were looking at ways to improve a crossbow. So uh, the very first type was actually a ballista. So a crossbow, you can say, is like a smaller version of a catapult because it is a device that hurls an object at a great distance. So as long as it does that job, it's pretty much considered a catapult. But when we think of catapults, we always go for like the larger, larger machines. 
Very cool. Now, we also had some students, and this may get a little bit specific into the history end of today's lesson, but I know you mentioned a couple of uses uh, for catapults back in times when, you know, invading castles was a little bit more front of mind for people than it probably is now. And we were wondering uh, where catapults came from. I think students have had a couple of different regions and periods in history where they're familiar with their use. Excellent question. So yeah, so the first instance of a catapult, as I mentioned before, was during ancient Greek times. So we actually, uh, I wouldn't say we, it wasn't as Rose and I, but it was actually an archaeologist uh, that studied uh, ancient um, documents that they were able to salvage uh, through excavations, where they made an instance of a catapult. Uh, so once again, like, you know, it was like crossbows and such. Uh, but the actual usage of a catapult was during uh, medieval times. Uh, so medieval England, uh, where you started seeing larger and larger versions of those catapults. So that's where you saw uh, the mangadel that you see on camera and trebuchets being uh, happening in kingdoms throughout Europe. So trebuchets and mangadels were usually the bigger portions that were widely used during that period. All right, awesome. And again, yeah, definitely a lot of opportunity for overlap between some science, little bit of math, or I suppose more than a little bit of math from what Rosa showed us, and uh, and history as well. Now, students tuning in today, uh, certainly we're all very excited about learning more about how they can create themselves and what they can create themselves. And we're wondering, you know, it's seems like a pretty cool job here creating some very large, you know, person-sized catapult. So what sorts of things can students be doing maybe when they're a little bit younger to gain some experience to get to do what you all do, to get to be involved in science and involved in creating uh, technology? So that's a great, great question. And I don't know if you all remember me saying, asking those questions are really critical to being a, a good scientist, um, thinking about connections, um, you know, doing a little bit of research. Because frankly, when you are building and designing something, you want to see if uh, you can get as much information about it as possible so that you can make the right decisions. Because information is going to help you make either a great device or lack of information leads you to maybe struggling a little bit more than you, than you needed to. So always being curious, always asking those questions, loving the fact that you, know, you can do things with your hands um, and trying things out uh, and just being a learner. I don't know, Mr. Alejandro, what do you want to add to that? You know, I was gonna say the exact same thing. So yeah, always being curious and you know, you have Tinkercad now. So you can definitely start designing on your own and coming up with your own gallery of different projects. And, you know, always tinkering and working it out, especially if you're someone who is very handy, um, you know, always work with an adult as your lab assistant, but, you know, definitely build. Uh, the only way to kind of learn some of those skills is just being so very hands-on. So, um, you know, even with our catapult, you know, some of our colleagues that actually put this together, they weren't known to be, you know, in the construction uh, business. So like, you know, it was their first time building something. And like I said, it took a lot of steps for us to finally get our product that you see on screen. So it took a lot of, a lot of effort to kind of come up with what you see on screen. Yeah, I think the only thing I'll add is don't be afraid to fail because failing means you learn something. And so, Learning is always good. All right, yeah, and it sounds like our students who made the time to be here with us today are already off to a great start in that curiosity to learn and the curiosity to want to tinker and to know more than they did the day before. Uh, it is about that time. Thank you so much, Rosa and Alejandro, for staying with us an extra few minutes for Q&A. Do you have any other closing thoughts? I know you've already had some really, really great suggestions for students already. Any other closing thoughts before we end today's lesson? Be curious. Yeah, always tinker. 
Awesome. I love it. Thank you so much, Rosa. Thank you so much, Alejandro and the Liberty Science Center team as a whole. We hope that everybody enjoyed getting to tinker or observe a little bit today. We hope that you'll, you know, take the next steps and see if you can create on your own, even if you didn't get the chance to do so today. And we hope to see you all back in another Varsity Tutor Star Course sometime soon. In the meantime, don't forget to post those selfies and tag us here at Varsity Tutors and the Liberty Science Center to win. Thanks so much, everybody.